Yakko, thank you for coming. Sorry for the inconvenience on the address. I just it's don't. It's all good. I just launched the website, which is something I, I wanted to bring up too. I just launched the RideBalance.net uh, website, and I did it because I, I need a planner slash secretary slash something. I was like, well, yeah. what better way than just to book things? Yeah. But then there's that information of yeah. like, what address do you give out? Because mm-hmm. if you do your legit address, then that means anybody could just do a fake appointment and get True. information. Anyways, blah blah blah. Yeah. So sorry about that. It's all good. It was very professional. Yeah. It was very, just the wrong address. <laughs> how, how did it feel? Well, that's uh, the billing address. That's the thing. All my you. bills, everything. Uh, the UPS. UP, yeah, the UPS. I, yeah, I got to the UPS. I was like, is it in the back maybe? Or like, maybe yeah. I'll just go ask. But, no, so they have mailboxes. And, and yeah. what I do is is my address, uh, my driver's license, insurance, mm-hmm. everything goes there. Yeah. So if you move or whatever the case is, like I've had that PO box uh had that one for you know seven eight years yeah so i've moved maybe three or four times but everything has the same address so i don't mm-hmm. lose any any accountability i mean it's smart yeah because you, you, you don't want to give out your like real address yeah and, and there's little things like that that like when you become more popular like you know we're, we're gonna get into who you are and what you do yeah but you're you're getting to that level of becoming more popular more famous People just want to call your phone. People want to show up at your address, and it gets it gets pretty fucking weird. Yeah. My my, I learned this because my ex, she was uh, the lead anchor uh, on uh, Univision on the TV oh, wow. networks, and wow. she was like one of those fucking hot Colombian crazy bitches. <laughs> um, obviously, I can say that because that's my ex. Yeah, <laughs> but the stalking was real, you know. So wow. so we we that's we, we almost never were able to put stuff in our name, and we had Dang. to put you know, everything on an address and address. And people yeah. would show up to the peel boxes, you know, Jeez. just to like get a picture. Like stop, it's, it's a real fucking yeah. thing. Yeah, but you don't know how far someone can take it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's the same thing with, I mean, it, even if you, you're not doing like an entertainment, like career or something like that, where you have a lot of fans or something like that, in everyday life, you know, everyone loves privacy. Like privacy is one of the most important things to a lot of people. Absolutely. But I mean, as an artist, I'm not like, nowhere near where I want to be, like, um, fame-wise, but, <laughs> there you go, <laughs> um, but, like, it, it's the same thing, like, doesn't matter how, if you have 50 followers or if you have 50 million, it's like, there's going to be a couple people where you're going to give your, your love to, your attention to, and you're going to show your appreciation for them supporting what you do, but then when they, when they take that path where they're trying to push it a little further than it needs to be where it's like getting uncomfortable. Yeah. There's like, I've had a lot of instances like that. And like what? Like the, the, um, uh, <laughs> let's bring one up. I mean, like a stalker situation. No, no, like no. Thank thing? God. Thank God. No, nothing like that it happens. But like, yeah, no, thank, thank God. Nothing like that. But, um, definitely in, in DMS and stuff like that. It's just, Oh, that's the worst. The trolls. Yeah. I, well, I would never luckily I've never had anyone who's like hated me so much and constantly hated me in my DMs but I've had a lot of people who will show me so much love but there's a lot of times where I'm always going to give you my energy of gratitude and I'm never going to ignore your message I I, like never want to do that because I know how that feels I know like when I used to message my inspirations like and they would just never read it or leave me on read so I'm going to, I'm going to say thank you and stuff like that. But there's a lot of people on Instagram, especially where it's like, um, like, Hey, what are you, what are you doing? Like, um, where do you like live? Like you're, you're in LA, right? Like, Oh, cool. Do you like have a part-time job? Do you do this? Like, it's like, okay, I want to, I want to be nice and, and sh- respond to your messages. But then it's like, yeah, I want to be polite too, too much. Uh, I want to be polite. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, yeah. You're, yeah. from, from the beginning, you, you thought you were a super polite guy. Hey, you know, yeah. your parents raised you very strict yeah. household, or um, not strict, just great parents, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, th- th- it's an awesome quality. Yeah. If you don't mind, how old are you? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> your manner is a. Uh, right now, you just walked in. You're like, uh, you know, can I torch my skates? Yeah, <laughs> of course. You know, like, oh, it's just you know, it's electric. Just letting you know. Yeah. And then, like, oh, yeah. It, it, it's just amazing because there's just so many people. Where are you originally from? Yeah, Ohio. Nice. Also, that's why yeah. you're doing the, the concert. The, the concert event. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to all the people in Ohio. Ohio rocks. Ohio, what's up? That's fucking. Um, that's dope. When did you come to California? Are you, are you staying here permanently or just uh, shows? Uh, 
I mean, I don't really know anything permanently, uh, but uh, I've been out here three years. Uh, I came out here, um, when was it? It was like this time, 2019, actually, like fall time. I came out here uh, fresh off of uh, Brooklyn, actually. I, I graduated high school in 2018. Um, knew I didn't want to be anywhere near Ohio, so I uh, set off to New York City. I was like, I'm going to go to school, I'm going to get a degree, I'm going to be in the military, but I'm also going to, you know, dabble with my music, because senior year is when I really pushed my music, and when, when I, like, showed people what I could do, and um, so I was like, you know, let me keep doing this, because it just makes me happy, like, that's how, how it always starts for me, it's like, it's just whatever makes me happy, I'm just going to do it, um, not because, not because I, I want to force it, you know, so I was in New York, and basically, um, waiting to hear back from the military because I was going to do the reserves for the National Guard and the National Guard was going to pay for my school, all that stuff. And um, when I was uh, a little kid, I had really bad OCD and anxiety. So I took um, medication for it and I had to see like therapists, stuff like that. But the military is like really against any medication, any mental problems, like immediately is a red flag they have to send it to so many people like your paperwork get all this stuff really yeah i would have thought they were desperate to that, get recruits me too and I, I was like willing to take their money for school too so yeah, i was of like course. well you're giving your, your life for it right no but it it was something i always wanted to do and like throughout high school i was doing like the rltc programs or anything um J-R-O-T-C. i didn't do rltc i did like junior police explorer though yeah like, i wanted That's to be same concept yeah very um I did the criminal justice programs in high school. Um, I did like I did all that just to get ready for uh, my end goal was to be in the SWAT um, in my uh, like hometown or maybe near it. But that was my goal, and so I was like, the military could definitely help me with that, with different trainings and stuff like that. Before I went into the um, you know job, yeah, you get more part. time and more credit. All right. So then um, I'm in New York. Uh, about to go to school, they're telling me, hey, we still don't have your paperwork ready. We're, we're going to have to like push it back a semester. But I'm like, I can't sit here in Ohio and just do nothing while all my friends just are going to colleges. They're, you know, they're getting their lives started. And I'm like, I want to do that too. So I was like, I'll just pay for this semester, um, figure it out. So I still went to Brooklyn. Um, like I'll never forget my dad, my brother took me, they drove me, they dropped me off. Um, and right when like their truck pulled away, I just remember that feeling. It was like the first time I ever felt like truly alone. Where I was like, I've never been in a situation like this in my life. Like I've always had, you know. Yeah, it looks like my, you come from a big family too. Yeah, I, I do, I do. And I have, I always have my brothers, my sisters, my, my mom, my dad. Like my parents are divorced, so it made my family even bigger. So I was always surrounded by like, some type of family love. And like when I instantly had that taken away from me, it was a whole other world. And I had to adapt and I did not adapt quick. <laughs> it was like, took a few weeks of calling my mom, like bawling my eyes out. Mom, like, I, I don't know if I can do this. I don't, I don't know anybody. Like this city is crazy. I'm out it's here. It's wild. Yeah. It's wild. Like New York is, is brutal. And um, I actually well, just what, got attacked. What, um, what month? month i was like i was there yeah what month did you go there september september okay. yeah so, so the weather's at least a little yeah yeah it wasn't too bad but um i just got a tat of like the three cities that i lived in so like ohio's in the middle new york's up here la's down here and um above them i got like a symbol of what they taught me so ohio has uh, a house for my home new york has a dumbbell because it made me strong and la has a light bulb because it's made me wise that's and, fucking dope Thank you. And, yeah, I've, I've traveled to a lot of countries, and I was like, yeah. that would be cool to get all the fucking cities that I've been to. Just yeah. Like, shush, shush, shush. But then I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I can't commit. I mean, I was thinking about that because I was like, I could just keep going with, like, different cities, but it's just, like, those three are very, very important to me. Um, yeah. Not necessarily cities, just, like, um, types what of they life. What they mean, you right. know, the experiences. Exactly, exactly. The place I was in. Um, so, yeah, I mean... It, I started going to classes. Um, classes were good. Well, my criminal justice classes were good. My math and like the basic stuff, like I was never good at school or anything like that. So I was having a hard time. Um, it was just very stressful. I needed a job 
because I realized I had to pay for food. There's no like meal plans or anything. Yeah. Um, and where they had to stay, it was called St. George Hotel. So I felt like I was like life of Zach and Cody or something because we lived in a hotel um, for the whole semester. And um, it was so, so expensive. So I like, I wanted to focus on music also, but also make some money. So after classes, I would just go street perform. And um, so you would literally get on the streets and perform. Yeah. I, like, like yeah. What, 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 what's the yeah. setup for that? Um, well, I needed equipment. So I just found some stuff on Amazon, like super cheap, like a hundred bucks for a whole like set. Um, I, I still have it today. Um, it's just like such a great memory. Like I need to keep it. Yeah. So I still have the speaker, like huge speaker. If that you want to put a load on that. On your phone. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Is it picking up? Yeah, you can you hear the yeah. thing on the table. I got you. If you don't mind. Oh, for sure. Um, shoot, how do you... I just uh, swipe, swipe down from the top right. Oh, yeah, do not disturb. There you go. There you go. Actually, I'm, I might as well uh, go live on Instagram if you don't mind. Hmm. Not at all. Cool. Sit you up right here. Or... Oh, shoot. Oh, that's good. All right, so, um, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, street so, yeah, street perform. Um, so I, I got this $100 speaker, um, had a wireless microphone because, um, I wanted to, like, be able to walk around freely and while I'm performing, and I went to, I took the subway to Times Square, and, um, I remember pacing for at least an hour, at least, like, I was just... I, I couldn't set my speaker down. Like, I could not. I felt like every single person in that Times Square was looking at directly at me, like, judging me. What is this kid about to do, you know? I'm 18 years old, and I'm, like, scared out of my mind. Um, what I did, I just I just set down the speaker, and I'm like, you know, let me just, like, pretend like I'm just bopping to some music. So I put on some, some music that I liked, um, was just listening to it. I was like, all right, all right, now I'm getting into it. And then I was like, let me just turn on one of my songs and just see what happens. So I turn on one of my songs. I start, turn the mic on. I start rapping along with it. I start moving more. I start going around Times Square, looking at the people pointing at them. And now I'm in the zone and I'm like, because it's like once you start that first song, you know, you just get out of your headspace and you're just locked in a moment that is like undescribable. But um, I just... I just remember seeing all these faces start crowding around me, and it's like they'll give you that like this kid, this kid can spit like low key, and, yeah. Um, and like that just made me feel so great, and so confident in my performing, and it fixed my my uh, my stage presence. Like street performing made me like such a performer. If I had never street performed, I still would probably be so timid on stage. But it's like I I realized that if I can make people my puppets on the street i can make people that come to buy tickets to my show like definitely my puppets at a concert you know what i mean yeah that's why i tell, I I tell other artists, stuff. right i mean yeah for sure but i'm like if i'm performing with other artists too i'm like dude they'll do whatever you want them to do if you raise your left hand they're gonna raise their left hand if, if you jump to the right they're gonna jump to the right you know what i mean like is it interesting how crazy. many people want you to lead them yeah, like it, like like they they want to be led. They want to be pushed. They want to be led. They want to be you know. They, they yeah. don't want to think. They just want to enjoy yeah. or something. I mean, yeah, that's why social media is so popular. Because I mean, we're just scrolling and we're just like we just want to we want to we don't want to you know do anything. We want to we wanna, wanna, we watch you do it. Yeah, we don't want to create content. Yeah, we want to we wanna, wanna watch it. You know, we want to watch you do and like. There's the, there's two sides. There's a creator and then there's the consumer. Consumer, exactly. So it's like it, it, it's a balance that. So do you create, create more or consume more? Create for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Create. I mean. So you would say like 80, 20, 70, 30, 60, 40. Dang. When, when you say consume, like what kind of content are we consuming? I'm talking about like you know obviously creating is creating and consuming yeah. like you go through one and then all of a sudden you kind of fall to that little rabbit hole of like oh, yeah oh, shit like all right. <laughs> Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, let me save this fucking... Mm, true. Shoot, I'll probably say like 70-30. 70-30. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times where I'm in the studio and I'm like, I'm going to take a break real quick. And I'm like, ooh, it's been 10 minutes. Like, okay, come on. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. I can't get that back. It's crazy. It's crazy. But 
Um, yeah, so basically, just like a shorter, shorter version of the story is like, I, I just realized that um, New York wasn't going to be for me. Um, it's very, very tough, very gritty, but it's something I needed. It's something I needed to make me stronger, like I said. And um, it's definitely one of the most beneficial times in my life because of how hard it was. This is where I usually get all the sound. Okay. So, you know, usually like the camera, you get this kind of echo-ish, yeah. which it's just more editing. Oh, gotcha, but gotcha. But this, this is where, what, what we're hearing, like, you know, oh, shit, we're recording now <laughs> on the fucking right. Audible, you know? Yeah. It's just more editing for me. Gotcha. You gotcha. know? Um, so is this um, in your way? I don't know if you want me to. No, no, like, no. The camera? No, I don't care. It's no. good? Okay. I don't give a fuck. See, that, that, that's oh. the other thing. It, it's back to... It's back to um, when you start off and you do something. When you, when you start off and you do something, you're so paranoid and you're worried and what are people going to think and what are people going to say? And when I started the podcast, any background noise would drive me crazy. I was like, oh my God, they're going to get mad. Oh, I shouldn't ask, a, you know, if somebody should turn off their phone. Like you, you limit yourself. But then when you do it enough times, you don't stress out about those things. You're like, this is just natural this is natural. This is like, it, it's, it's an accident. It happens. Yeah. You know, don't panic. Uh, you know, what are we going to do? Stop everything and, you know, talk about 10 minutes. Like, oh my God, you know, there's going to be a lot of editing yeah. going on. You, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. So, and, and you get that with experience mm-hmm. and you get that as you get older and with wisdom and, yeah. you know, so on. Yeah. So For then sure. you started doing, so now you feel New York made you hard yeah. enough where now <laughs> you have the confidence yeah. of doing this anywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy, like, from the subways to the Brooklyn Bridge to Times Square, like, I, I want to go back so bad and, and visit, I haven't been in a while, um, but I just feel like when I do, it would, I feel like it's gonna hit me hard, like, just what, seeing how what, far I've come. What, what did you feel that you were like, you know what, this ain't the place for me, like, I, you know, like, I, I got what I needed, I need to move on, what was it about New York? Um, I still couldn't, I still couldn't really feel like free creatively. I felt like trapped. I I, I like constantly felt like the buildings were surrounding me. The people were weighing me down. Um, It's very like dark and gloomy there a lot of the year. So it's like, it's easy to get into a darker place, especially I went during the holidays um, like the fall time, so it's constantly cloudy outside. It's wet. It's cold, and people are just naturally in a in a less good of a mood. And they're walking by you, and if they don't if they don't mess with you, then they're not going to talk to you. Where here, I found you know I can make a friend on the street in twenty minutes. It's just very different vibes. Um, the environment has so much to do with it. I think is like it's so much more sunny out here, and um, just was like boost your boost your vibe and your mood um but i don't really know i don't think there was something that just like set me off where one day i was like i woke up and i was like uh new york's not it it was definitely over time of trying and um learning and and stuff like that but see i knew i wasn't going to stay and go into school like i knew i was going to drop out so it was either um go back home go to school or just like stay there and and struggle for a long time um, because I was nowhere ready to get my own place there. So I had to go home pretty much. Yeah. And once I went home, my, my goal was to probably do like a music school and um, like Kent state or something. Cause my mom wanted me to go to school if I was going to live at home. So <laughs> like, I don't want to go home then. <laughs> What's the seriously, point? Seriously, seriously. I just, no I thanks, just dropped out of school and I'm like, she wants me to go back. But she, no, what she said, she's like, you either pay rent or you go to school. It's like one or the other. So I was like, okay, cool. So I, I researched some online classes that were free that were just like a little certificate that you could get. And like, I could show my mom, I was like doing stuff, but it was like no diploma or anything. Yeah. And half the time I'm not even doing the classes. I'm just, I'm just showing her like, you know, the she's going to hear this, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's funny now because yeah. like, she's like one of my biggest supporters now, but, um, how, how, how was that tra- transition, uh, telling your parents, you know, the goal was obviously military and school. Mm-hmm. And now you're like, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm going music. Well, I mean the, my dad is the one who convinced me to drop out of school. He was the one, uh, from day one. I mean, he, cause and, and, and I, I want to ask this. Yeah. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Hey. How old's your dad? Um, 
Is he younger or? Yeah, well, that's the thing. He's just like very young in the mind. But I, I mean, no, he's young. He's he's like 52, dad. I'm okay. sorry. I don't know if that's right. <laughs> I don't know if it's right, Bob. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just saying like just the fact that you're saying that he, he kind of even guided you like that. Don't go to school. Yeah, yeah. Because the school system's just not what it was, you know, for no. us years ago, you know. Like right now, oh, it's just that, 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 that. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Exactly. Other thing. So that, that, that's why I'm yeah. surprised that. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, he was like one of my biggest supporters, and um, I mean, his apartment is the one I I recorded my first mixtape in. Um, I would just set up my mic in the corner in his kitchen and uh, have my little laptop that he bought me for Christmas and make these songs. And it's funny because he always like jokes with me. He's like, "Why did you not tell me you could do this?" Like years before I bought you the, that equipment and I was like, cause I was so nervous cause I would like cuss in my raps and I was like, I don't want you guys to hear that. Like, yeah. Uh, cause then I'm going to get in trouble or something. I don't know. And, uh, I would make like literally ask my family to leave the house so I could record like new songs. So they, they would just go out, like go grocery shopping, run errands, go to the park or whatever. So just so I could like have the house alone where I can like scream and rap. And, uh, <laughs> it's so funny now, like, cause they just listen to my music all the time. When I go home, it's like they're playing it in the house and stuff. But um, in the moment, I was just nervous. So he was like always in, on board. And um, he was kind of like, it was like when I would call my mom in New York, she would, you know, come for me and stuff like that. And I call my dad. He would also come for me, but he would also just be like, what are you still doing there? Then, you know, like, what do you like if it's not working out? What are you going to do about it? Because obviously, like. Your, your body's telling you that this isn't what you want and where you should stay. Yeah. So, um, at the end, you know, he, he was talking about some Kent state schools that have good music programs. I'm like, okay, okay. And then he, I, he was just like, basically, you know, you can't sit there and say, what if your whole life? Cause, um, you know, he, he's always done that where he's not taking initiative cause it's too scary, but, like he didn't want to see that from me, you know. So I think if I yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, no, learn, for sure. Learn from other people's mistakes or other people's experiences. Yeah, I absolutely. Think, I think like he's never said this, but he he like kind of wanted to just like see me live out my dreams for also him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's why a big part of me wants to do this for them also. You know, not just for me. Um, and I went back home and. It was it was difficult with my mom on on that side because um, she comes from a family where it's like very, you know, go to school, you get a job, you have kids, you have a family, you die. You know what I mean? It's like very repetitive and the whole traditional. Family, it's traditional. Yeah, it's it's co- comfortable and it's nothing safe. wrong with that. Yeah. No, not at all. And there's a lot of people that they do those things and they're the happiest they'll ever be. And right. It's just, there's other people who will well, especially when you get older, you know, especially yeah. when when you're you know you're you're a For grandpa sure. and you're a grandma and you go oh, yeah. you know the house yeah. is the holidays are happening and yeah. you can fill up a house, you know. Right. It's crazy. Like I, I'll I'll look at um, like the older generations so differently than when I was a kid because like when I was a kid, you know, I would look at like older people in their seventies, eighties. I'm like, dang, like their life is almost over, like that. It's just like sad, like they they like. I wonder how their life was, if they have any regrets, whatever. Yeah, a lot. But now it's like I kind of look at that. I'm like, if I just keep living my life however I want, and once I get to that stage of where I'm like 80 years old, like I can truly just sit there and appreciate the, the small things, you know. And like maybe I'll have a family, and and I kind of look at the beauty of being old more than I ever did before, and especially like being out here and see, meeting so many people, I've learned that so much. Well, hopefully in the next 10 years, we'll, we'll stop yeah. aging, you know, like yeah. they'll have a cure for that. <laughs> right, and, right. And we'll stop aging. And then one day when we want to go, we're like, all right. Yeah, like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. uh, just to talk about that topic real quick, I was yeah. listening to an interview with Elon Musk, and I liked mm-hmm. the way he described it. Originally, it's like, oh, we got to find a fountain of youth. But like, how ridiculous is a fountain of youth <laughs> he sound would, like? He would say that. Well, he didn't say that. What oh, he okay. said is uh, aging is a sickness. It, it, it's a sickness that we have that we've all accepted, and and it's happening. What do you mean like a sickness? 
So uh, let, let's say you have like a cancer, you know how cancer develops and develops and develops. And let's mm-hmm. say you have uh, an, another disease or whatever the case that just develops. It's just a sickness or a disease that we've accepted. Yeah. So he says aging is a disease we accept. It's a, a, a chromosome or something in our body that makes us age. Mm-hmm. Now, if we can fix that problem, if we can fix that disease that causes aging, mm-hmm. we can have people live longer. And when he words it like that, I'm like, oh, shit, maybe there is hope. You're right. You're just curing a a, a disease or you're curing a whatever you want to call it. You know, you're you're, you're curing something versus, you know, a fountain that you dip in and you come out. Oh, I'm fucking. Yeah. You know, that's that's scary, though. I mean, I don't even know if I'd want that. I I don't I don't know if I'd want anyone to figure that out. You hear. But why? I mean, we're so accustomed to. I guess our age is now, you know, you, you die. Yeah, but a hundred years 80s. ago, the, the life expectancy was like 45. Right. That a hundred, 200 years ago. Before that, 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 it was probably even less. That is true. When you think about it like that, I guess we gradually. I mean, here's, gonna, here's, here's the thing. Uh, but, and this is another argument uh, that I heard. The issue is, is that we become our wisest and our smartest and our most intellectual in our 50s. You know, our minds, the way we, we do, we, we don't react. There's no ego. We're not trying to fight. You know, somebody one day, hey, fuck you, fuck you, hit my car. Like, okay, bro, like, it's cool. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. we're mellow. When, when we're in our 20s, what the fuck? Like, we're just, Everything you know, was yeah, <laughs> yeah, young, dumb, and fucking full of cum, right? <laughs> and then uh, when you're in your 30s, you're like, oh, well, now it's time to get my shit together, right? So then you get even more experiences. Then when you get in your 40s, you're kind of like, okay, all right, I know the direction I'm going. Yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. you don't. And then when you're in your 50s, there's just this wisdom and education and, and you become more intellectual. But the problem is, is now you ran through half your life, mm-hmm. you know, and now it's like, fuck, I'm at my best now. And now I'm going to really start aging. Now I'm really going to now my bones are hurting. Now I want to like be more active and it's harder for me to get back, you know, and, and it just kind of sucks. But if you can extend that process and be like, oh, shit, we're wiser now, because you got to understand some of the wisest people in the world are old. But if they were much younger looking physically, you know, if we had that yeah. cure. Not even, I mean, not even looking physically. I mean, just like you said, like your bones at like 40. I've heard a lot of people say like, you'll just wake up differently. Yeah, you just wake you know? up and you're you're, yeah. you're like, I got to fucking stretch. <laughs> and I gotta right. Do if you, you don't know? mind me asking, how old are you? I, I just turned 40. Wow. Happy yeah. birthday. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, how do you feel? Yeah. Did you well, wake I, up I, on your I, 40th? You're I'll like, be like, honest. <laughs> uh, I panicked. I was like, fuck, I panicked yeah, and I've been hitting age. the gym like fucking crazy. But uh, wow. I, I, I feel physically, I feel like I'm in my prime. No, you look great. I mean, it, I would have guessed like 30s or something. Yeah, because like in my twenties, you know, I, I was I, I wasn't working out. Yeah. I was any party I can go to, anywhere I can get a bottle just and drink. That liver. Yeah, just <laughs> fucking woo, like zero fucks given, you know? And yeah. then now, now do you see it? Now physically I'm like, oh, and then when I get to the fifties, it's like, oh, I better watch out. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think that would be, yeah. you know, I, I think it would it'd be good if they can come up with it. And of course, people have the option, but like you said, there's people that are like, it depends what kind yeah. of life you're living too. True. If you get I'm to seventies yeah. and you're full of regrets, you know, then like, hmm. that, that's true. I'm, I'm, I mean, for me though, I'm also very religious, so, uh, like, I kind of am like, I wouldn't want science to ever interfere with like what God has planned for me. You know. But I mean? question. Yeah. Um, what if a loved one developed cancer mm. and a doctor says, hey, we can cure the cancer? Isn't that using yeah. science to yeah. manipulate? No, you're right. You got a point. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying, yeah. oh, you know, it, you know, they're going to have vampires. And if you let the <laughs> vampire bite you, you know, join the dark side, you know, yeah. like fucking, you know, no, we're no, just talking. Point, we're talking about we're talking about. um what if instead of eating junk food, you eat organic food and you live an extra 10 years? Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's science, you know, <laughs> the s- studies. Yeah. So, so it, it, it would yeah. be much better. Anyways, I'm going to make one more point. We'll get back, yeah. to, back to your music. You're, I, you're, I actually you're making me deep think right now. Well, that, that's <laughs> the whole point of the Right Balance podcast. 
Um, here's one more deep think for, for everybody. Uh, I think Eddie Murphy said it uh, when he was filming uh, Coming to America, the, the newer one, and he, he made a quick clip. A lot of people haven't seen it, but he says, um, let's pretend you live 100 years, okay? That's 100 summers, 100 springs, 100 falls, 100 winters. The first few don't count because you're a kid. And the last ones don't count because you're much older. You're not, you're, you're not at your prime. You, right. they, they count, but you're not at your prime. You're not going to take off your shirt and go to the beach and just go surfing and, you know, fucking yeah. get on stage and fucking, you know, rock out. Yeah. Um, so the first ones don't count. The last ones don't count. And this is if you make the 100 years, right? Mm-hmm. So then that leaves 40, 50 summers. 60 summers of like good health of good health in your life. And most people have already lived half of those and they only have half of those left. Enjoy the moment is the point. Yeah. Enjoy the moment. Don't say I have, you know, 365 days. Don't say I have a year. No, I have one summer. Mm-hmm. I have a summer coming up. I have that summer. I need to get my beach body. I need to go on vacation. I need yeah. to get the day off from work. I need to, you know, like, well, there, there was another article that I was reading that it was like the top regrets in the world, you know, of, of people on their dying bed. Mm-hmm. And number one was I didn't quit my job on time. Mm-hmm. That was the number one regret. Mm-hmm. Number two was I didn't tell the person I love, I love them, mm-hmm. you know, and then the, the list goes on. It was like top 10. But those are the two that stuck out. So my point is you, you have to go after this. And yeah. what this does have to do with our conversation is the fact that your dad's saying, hey, this is your passion. If this is your love, the fact that you're saying that your mother is like, hey, my mom was my number one supporter. Yeah. That's fucking amazing. Because, like, you know how many people have dreams? And, and like we, we said before we even started the podcast, your own family saying, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. That's dumb. What are yeah. you thinking? Get a real fucking job. Yeah. You can't fucking, what are you going to do? Fucking sing and fucking move put on TikTok. Like, you know, right. but people make fun of it. People talk shit. People put down the closest people, your friends. Because they're too scared. Themselves. They're too scared. But then you finally do it. And, and, and if you have some support, you get it. And then you get one fan that reaches out and says, hey, man, I really like your fucking music. Oh, that's, you know, that's game changer. That's, that's what keeps going. Oh, 100%. I, 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 had, I had stopped the podcast once, you know, for like four or five months. I was working on a different project. Mm-hmm. And, and. You know, like two, three people. Hey, I really enjoy your show, man. Are, are you going to continue? And this was on episode f- 30 mm-hmm. or 40. Now I'm on episode, you're going to be probably episode 89 or 90. Crazy. You know, and, and now it's just been a whole different experience. Yeah. I mean, it comes at the perfect time when you need that that, that boost of encouragement. But, I mean, kind of what you were saying about, um, like, you know, living the moment <laughs> Like, I, I'm, I'd be a hypocrite if I was like, yeah, like, you know, that's why I'm doing this because I'm doing what I love and I'm, and I'm chasing my dreams, which is exactly what I should be doing because I'm, I'm not going to have that regret of not knowing, you know, but at the same time, um, for people who know me, it's like, I'm so I'm constantly like pushing myself over the edge to do like, so there is a balance. I'm very, very tr- like hard trying to learn this. And I, and just recently I, you know, spoke with one of my really good friends and um, he kind of just opened my eyes and is like, you know, you're exactly, you know, where you need to be in the moment. So it's like, why not enjoy it? Because you're going to look back and, and, and you're going to miss the journey. And I've heard that so many times, but for some reason it just like sat differently in me. And I'm like, you know, maybe I should go out more. Maybe I should hang out with my friends more. Maybe I, I should, you know, give myself a break more because my mindset is I always have to reward myself for hard work that I do, like with everything, because I'm scared if I lose that mindset, then I'm going to, I'm going to become a lazy person. I'm not going to slack off. I'm going to slack off. So like my mindset has always been, um, for example, like not music related. If if you eat, you know, a salad for six days in a row and then on the seventh day, like, okay, you can have a pizza. Like, I'll let you have a pizza. But it's to the point where it's like it was getting in the way of my mental health. And it's like, yeah, okay, maybe I'm looking after my body. But those simple pleasures are I've, I've learned more impactful than 
pushing myself to be so disciplined because there's a difference between being so dis- disciplined and, and also being happy, you know? So it's like, yes, d- chase a life without regret, but also chase a life of balance where you can have that discipline and happiness all in the same world. And I'm slowly learning that. I mean, um, I'm trying to do this now so I don't have that regret when I'm older because I could see my dreams coming true, but being very alone, like for yeah. sure. I could see that in my life because I, I've i like worked so hard where I, I have like at times had negative energy on others because I'm so lost in the in the moment what, what do you mean negative energy on others <laughs> like if i'm at a video shoot or something i'm not saying i'm an asshole but i'm saying like if you're getting in my way like i'm gonna let you know and like I, i'm i'm not thinking i'm not thinking properly i'm not myself i'm i'm work mode so it's like i'm just going 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 like show days show days are, are aren't always the best if i'm at, like stressed out because i'm like why is my band not here at this time? Why is why is the video not working? Why is this blah blah? And I take it out on the people around me, and it's like, it's like realizing that and accepting that I'm not being the best friend or family that I can because at the end of the day, you know, everyone's just trying to support me and help me. And uh, I'm, so you you, you yeah. see you see it as a negative on yourself when you get yeah, to that point for sure for sure and like like there's a different way of approaching it yeah and like I'm almost ashamed. No, not almost like I am ashamed of of like sometimes how how I've acted because um, I want things to go so well that if like it doesn't, then I'm going to get pissed, you know. And that's what I'm and that's what yeah. I'm kind of saying. As you get older, you start saying it's OK. Yeah, it's OK. But in the beginning, you, you are you, you come off as an asshole. Mm-hmm. You know, you come out because uh, you're stressed. Yeah. And like what you were saying, you, you, you got like, um, you know, 30. I got 40. 60 whatever some holidays left right summers yeah it's christmas um, whatever um like when i first came to la i saw everyone as competition and that was my biggest mistake i've made that i've recently learned like no one is competition because everyone has their own path no one is gonna have the same path no one's gonna blow up the same way no one's gonna it's like it's silly to co- even compare yourself to anybody it's silly to compare yourself to the joe rogan podcast because it's you're, you're not joe rogan right so it's like Learning that has definitely helped me mentally and also with my music. I'm younger than him, like obviously. That. You know, like, by, <laughs> come on. <laughs> and, like, come on, look at this podcast. It's yeah. a lot better anyways. That's right. No, 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 <laughs> We're comparing. No, stop. I, um, the, <laughs> we're just well, being hypocrites. <laughs> no, 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 come relax, guys. Relax. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so. Uh, no, you're, 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 yeah. you're, you're, I mean, this sounds tacky because it's, like, all over social media and stuff. But I've, I've said this many times before, you know, it even got that popular. You're only supposed to compete with yourself. Yeah. You're, you, every day you're supposed to be the better self, the better you that day. And the only person you should be competing with is yourself. Because mm. you cannot. There's always going to be somebody bigger, stronger, harder working, you know, whatever the case is. You, you can't, oh, the, but this person, that person, they have this and they have family support. They don't have family support. They, they grew up on the streets and, and they were lucky they grew up on the streets because they got all that fucking gangster quality. And it's like, no, dude, like that's not, and, and his parents were rich. You, it, it's never ending. It's absolutely never ending. And you, you have to focus only on yourself and you have to be disciplined, which, you know, you're saying you're being disciplined. Right. And that right. thing that you're talking about that you don't like about yourself, how you get with, you know, the band and everybody, that's just something that comes with experience and time and, you know, with age. That's just something that yeah. comes with age that you just become more patient. You go, oh. and trust me, I'm a hot tempered, you know, fucking person like ah, yeah. I lose my mind sometimes, yeah. but way more chill than, you know, than yeah. I was in my 20s. You have to be. You have to be. Yeah, you I have mean, to be. It's crazy. I, I want to. Um, I try and this should work. This should work. Let's see. I wanted to play Daylight, which is one of the jams I was listening to while I was at the gym today. Hey, good workout song. You only see me. Right, see, we got it synced in here. So I'm going to have this Daylight out now. Everyone go stream that. That's, yeah, this is out right now. This is playing from Spotify called Daylight. I love uh, this. Uh, this song is actually a perfect example of what I'm talking about. I know, and this is what yeah. I got when I was at the gym. I was like, yeah, because you, you talk about everybody here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll let this play.
I, I love the ups and downs you have with the beats and the rhythms. It's it's very catchy. Like this is one. It's a great gym song. It's a great gym song. There, he switched the beat, he switched the rhythm, keeping you engaged twice. And then there was one, there was another part where it changes again. Yeah, I think it goes up to like a, it's the bridge part. The bri- is it the bridge? No, not this part. The one after this. The one after this? Yeah, it breaks, it's, it's more like hip-hop-ish, or kind of, not hip-hop-ish, but like. Uh, yeah, basically, basically what a bridge is, is just like, it's the build-up to the last final, like, explosion hook. Okay, that, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Usually in the show, that's where I'll have everyone get low to the floor and then jump on the beat. Oh, really? Yeah. This part. Right here. The, the little drum rolls. It's everyone like, like oh, it's coming. Very dope. There it is. Actually, we'll let it play in the background. Yeah. What what what's the process of of creating such an awesome song like that? Like what what, what was? Well, I mean, big your, thanks what, to uh, to uh, Omer. Um, uh, he, shout uh, out, shout out Omer. If you're watching this, bro. Um, oh, he's watching it. My, my friend hit me up just basically to come record a song with him, and uh, he. Uh, produced that track and we we kind of just started from scratch um you know he came up with some guitar melodies and uh slowly just built it up um i'm not i'm not, i'm in no way like a producer well uh when, yeah. it, com- when it comes to the the, the beat, beats beat pads you know, all the instruments all that stuff so i love to be in the room where i can um like just sing you what i want to hear you know what i mean because that's what i hear i know i can hear it in my head but i don't know how to put it onto the you know, computer and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I was watching the, because you have your YouTube channel, and I was watching one of the videos when you were saying, uh, they, they, they were starting off a beat, and you're like, well, the lyrics are going to be something like, <laughs> like you were making yeah. the, 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 the tone of what, you know, the, the lyrics were going to be. Yeah. But yeah. you didn't have lyrics yet. Yeah, because I can and, hear it. And, and, and yeah, and, yeah, and obviously they're still creating the beats, but that I thought that was, like, interesting. That's why I'm like, you know, yeah. let, let finish the process. Yeah, Yeah. so, like, I can hear it in my head, and I can see it play out. So but I, you can't see the words <laughs> yet. Right, right. And I got you know the topic? It. it just depends. Because, um, you know, when you write, you don't want to force anything. You know, it could take you three days to write a hook, like, just a hook. And it's like... But when you feel it, then you, you're like, yes, that's the mood, that's the vibe, that's the energy that fits perfectly with the lyrics of what I want to talk about, how I want to say it, everything. So it's like once you get that, then you feel it, you know, like this is it. Um, so I knew that had to be big, like when we were doing that um, instrumental. And I was like, I mean, I as I usually am probably I was just sitting there overwhelmed as fuck. And I was like, my life is just a mess. And I was like, what do I write about? Like, I can't even think, I can't even think straight. Like I'm working so hard. Like my mind's just thinking about 10 million things at once. I'm like, shit, let's write about that. Like I I learned very quickly writing music. You want to write about what you're feeling because if you, if you're in, in, in love and you're trying to write a heartbreak song, like, it's not going to sound the same as it would, you know, if you're, if you're writing about your emotion that you're feeling. Yeah. You're going through a breakup or, (laughs) 
yeah, you're just gonna know that you know someone's faking it because you know, a lot of great songs have emotion behind them, and you can feel the emotion through the artist, through the way he's pronouncing his syllables, like to the little things like that. So, um, making daylight, I knew I wanted it to be big, so we we came up with that hook. Um, I sang it for him; he loved it, and then. The second part was like the hard part of, I don't know how to do the rhythm with the drums. Like wh- there's, there's so many ways I could go about it. And then, um, I, I was like, this was when I needed to talk about working too hard and like all my friends are having fun without me and just like living a, a le- messy life. So, um, like that kind of just like came out of me, uh, from like a personal place, you know? And, like exactly what we we're talking about the that second part of the hook works so hard but i don't but i don't feel right cuz all my friends are dancing tonight and and um that was like so real because um even for instance right now like this this year i was like you know maybe i won't go out for halloween maybe i'm just going to you know get in the studio i, I got to catch up on some recording um stuff like that and and then i was thinking about like something like what you said you know oh wait but am i going to say like there's always a next Halloween. There's always a, a next, you know. No, there's Christmas. only 50 Halloweens exactly. left, bro. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm like, fuck that. I'm like, no, I'm dressing up. I'm going out. I'm having a good time and enjoying myself. And so um, I, I was, I was, I wanted to write that song in a place of letting go that past mindset where it's like, it's okay to go have fun. Like, you don't have to live this messy life. Yeah, it's going to be messy, but you don't have to put yourself in those situations, you know? Yeah. So that was kind of. Yeah. I mean, there's always uh, extremes, you know. If you're working too much, that's bad. And if you're partying too much, that's bad. And if you're eating like, like, you know, everything in moderation. Exactly. And it sounds tacky, but but it's so true. You know, like you just start thinking about, you just start thinking about like traditional industries where people are working 40, 50 hours a week for the rest of their life. You know, and, and for 20 years, 30 years, like that's, that's fucking terrible. Oh, no, thank you. You know, like, yeah, no, especially in a time like this where you can, you know, do whatever you want. You could just fucking go to a, a you know, a, a flea market, a, a garage sale, buy shit and fucking, yeah. you know, sell it on eBay. Oh my gosh, the people like that will tell me they can't do something because of their work kills me inside, like kills me because... I but but it's 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 a brainwash. It's it's yeah. a fucking brainwash because yeah. what you got to understand is you're 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 in that sweet spot of like okay I gotta work I gotta work uh, like I gotta save up money I gotta buy a car I live in town I want to get a different apartment or a little house. All right, I want to get a girlfriend. I want to take her out. And, and I, now I have rent. Now I have a cell phone bill. Now I have a car payment. Now I have insurance payment. Now I have, oh, fuck, you know, she's fucking pregnant. I got to have this kid. I got this hospital. Now I got a child. Fuck, you know. Oh, shit, we got to get a bigger place. Because of these materialistic things that we we get trapped with, Mm -hmm. that pressure starts Mm -hmm. feeling, like, real. And then you start telling yourself that story. I need this fucking job. Mm -hmm. My, My older brother, he was stuck at a job for 16 years. I was like, dude. Quit, quit. I can't. My house, my insurance, I can't. He, he told himself this story for 16 years. Mm-hmm. 16 years. On the 16th year, he was promoted already so many times. He had all the experience that the company realized they could just hire new people and pay them a lot less and fire him. Mm-hmm. And what did they do? They fired him. Mm-hmm. And for two, three weeks, my life is over. What am I going to do? I'm going to lose my house. I'm gonna lose now, it's been five years later. He's happier than ever. Now he's like, you know, has a little online business, goes to travels to South America with his family. Like he's living the fucking life now, you know, but people get stuck. Like it. that's real. I love it. And you just remind me of something really important that I want to real quick. Like I'm talking to my dad right here. Dad, listen to what we're saying. And there's this job that he really wants. Right. But he's too scared. He doesn't want to leave his, his, you know, comfort, his security. Um, security. Yes, exactly. So, Dad, you got to do it. I did you, it. You got to do it's it. It's your turn. And and like you said, you know, your brother is so happy. Like, 
And, and, and that was the worst case scenario where he was loyal mm-hmm. and they fired him. Oh, wow. They fired him. So it was you know, meant to be. It, it was meant to be. Dang. They fired him, but he was going to hang on. If, if if they didn't fire him, he and the reason they home. fired him is because, like I said, they, they were so, there were only so many promotions you can get mm-hmm. that he was at the top tier, and they're like, he can't go up. well, we can bring other people to do the same job for mm-hmm. a lot less money mm-hmm. or multiple people to do the same job. So they fired him. It was, it was really fucked up. But for those two, three weeks, what am I doing with my life? And I'm going to lose my house and my wife's going to divorce me and my kids are going to hate me. And and then he started getting the clear picture. Okay, they fired me. All right, I'm, wait, I have I have money saved up. Wait, I, I, I can start a business. I, I Somebody offered me a job. Somebody offered me, oh, wait a minute, I have family. Wait a minute, I, good. Oh, wait, I'm fucking good. And it took about six months to have that freedom of like, fuck, I'm so happy, you know, like, you know, fuck that place. <laughs> but, yeah. but like no one's, no one's going to just, but he could have done that, you know, 15 years ago or yeah. 13 years ago. I mean, and, and it's okay. It, it's, it's never too late until it's too late until you're dead. You know, I think it was, um, I think it was Denzel Washington and I'm going to paraphrase the fuck out of this, but he was saying, I think it was at a college, uh, a college graduation speech. And he says, I, I'm going to fuck it up. I, right. I don't remember exactly what it sorry. was, but it was Denzel, like, sorry, man. Yeah. Sorry, Denzel, <laughs> uh, Mr. Washington, <laughs> Mr. Um, Washington. But he says, I don't know how he got to that point, but he says, imagine, imagine you're sitting on your dying bed and these spirits or characters in, in you, these, this, this the potential of what you could have done is surrounding your bed and says, why didn't you bring us out? Why didn't you introduce us to the world? Now we're going to die with you and nobody will ever know who we could have been. You know? And and that's the thing. We're, 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 we're so conquered with fear and control and, and bills and payments and uh, fucking interest and, you know, all this other stuff that we, 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 we don't do things based out of fear. Yeah. Have you, know. you seen the movie Soul? Soul? No. You've never seen the movie Soul? No. Oh my gosh. If you can tonight, Soul? I would watch it. Yeah. But it's a Disney movie. It like oh. came out, what's well, like Pixar, but it came out like, I don't know, four years ago. But that is not a kid's movie. Like, Well, most kids' will, movies don't seem like it. <laughs> true, but you'll watch that and like everything we're talking about. It's crazy because that's what it, it's about. It's it's uh, um, the guy passes away. Um like suddenly he just he it hit me hard because it, he was a musician and he finally got that gig that he he dreamed about for so long. He was a music teacher like 45, 50 years old. Yeah, got goosebumps for no reason. <laughs> Fucking what the hell? <laughs> it's a great movie. Um but so he was like a uh, teacher, he 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 was crossing the street one day just suddenly died. He um fell into a hole and he, like that he was going up to heaven and he's like wait 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 like where am i like no 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 i'm not supposed to do this like it's not my time so basically just like goes back into this it's like a crazy world they created where it's like it's not really they don't call it heaven or anything but they have where the it's like the before life where yeah but prop 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 yeah I mean, People are gonna laugh at us, but mm-hmm. pro- Pragamary or Pragamory, something like that. I don't, I, I don't know. It, 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 it's yeah. where you wait, you know. Yeah, to see where you where wait. You're going. Yeah, so it was like an escalator. That's what, that's they had the, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. The movie. Oh, you're good. Uh, they had like an escalator in the movie, and so he like fell off the escalator and went into the before life where the souls that were ready for the babies go into. So he had to, he had to, he basically had to help like one of the souls like find their their purpose in life. Um, and he always thought his was music, and they took him through his his whole life and showed him like different memories he had from his life and it was just like oh him alone him alone him alone watching tv him alone like making music him alone him alone him alone sad and he was just sitting there like dang like this can't be right like this was my life and then he he basically just realized that no one really has a purpose in life because life isn't about a purpose it's about exploring and enjoying the moments you're in and and all this kind of stuff like it's crazy yeah deep. being present crazy. traveling communicating knowing it's people crazy um you gotta watch that it's crazy uh, a weird similarity but different um i just found out moana 
You seen Moana, right? Mm-hmm. You know she dies in the movie. Wait, what? She's dead. So when she leaves the island, remember. so when she leaves the island, they don't show it. But when mm-hmm. she leaves the island, and she goes into that storm. Remember the, in the beginning, she goes into that fucking crazy storm. Yeah, she's dead and she dies. That's why when she wakes up on the mm-hmm. island, that's why she can see gods. Oh, that's her That's soul. why she sees all that. It was her soul. It was her soul. Wow. But she dies. <laughs> She's dead. Yo. You, don't, you don't even fucking know it. You know? Disney's but, messed up. Dude, Disney's dark. <laughs> Disney's I was like, what the dark. fuck? I, I, somebody was telling me. I was like, what? What do you mean? Wow. And I was like, oh, that's right. She goes through the fucking storm. And that's where she doesn't see any of the real family. Yeah. And that's where she sees Maui and fucking all wow. this other shit. Yeah, it's, 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 Disney's dark, dude. Dang. But they make excellent points. Yeah, like no, when you go deep. when you go deep into it, you're like, dude, this is not even kid stuff. That's why I like Pixar. Pixar really dives into that. Oh stuff. yeah, they're fucking great on that, man. Yeah, Soul Soul's a great one, man. I I, I will watch that. I, I have a I have a almost four year old, so we like uh, yeah. we do our little movie times. We'll definitely <laughs> watch good. that. Like your soul. You like, watch Coco though. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, you like that one? That yeah, was, that was great. That was deep too. What's funny about Coco is they did such a good job creating those characters. Like, you know, the faces and the expressions and how they are and how they talk mm. that I'm like, I know all these people like, l- like, like I know the people actors? that act like that. I oh, know people oh. that talk, <laughs> I, like I look at that old, the mom, I'm like, oh, that's fucking, you know, and yeah, I look yeah. at the kid. I'm like, that looks, looks like from this kid. You know? <laughs> like they're, yeah. they're so realistic that I'm yeah. like, I know all they these make characters. Them personable. They make them super personable. And then I just had somebody on the podcast that was one of the voices for uh, Coco. No way. Yeah. That's so, so sick. Which one? Uh, his name's Jaime Camille. So uh-huh. he's one of the, he does one of the voice. He does the Papa's voice. And so uh, cool. right right now he's like, he's like the, I would call him, he's the Brad Pitt of the Latin community. Like he's, oh, wow. he has a show on Netflix called El Rey. I don't know if you've seen it, that. but yeah, but there, it's all over. It became, Dang. it was number one watched um, series in, in the world. Dang. So that was just released like a month ago, two months ago. So yeah, that's cool. And now I got you, and fucking, you're gonna <laughs> blow up in the next fucking few months. Maybe the podcast is is this your transition after this. Like, I've I've had up. people <laughs> I've had people set some goals here, and uh, within a few months they started hitting those goals. Mm. You know, so but you're already hitting most of your goals, right? I don't really, I don't really set goals to be honest. I don't. Well, you might want to start setting goals. It's magic. <sighs> I don't know. I kind of just work. It's, it's magic. You think so? Oh, I know so. Really. It's magic. It's magic. You, 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 you write down what you want to accomplish and what you want to do and what you want to see mm-hmm. in 12 months. You know, like, I want to go here. I want to do this. I want to sell that. I want to do this. Put that away. Open it up. Open it up 12 months from now. Fucking mind boggling. Really? You're like, what? Like I did that and more. What? It's 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 legit. The power of attraction, the law of attraction, mm-hmm. it's it's powerful, man. Mm-hmm. And and that goals, you know, it, it's it's just it's just putting it on paper. It's just something it's different. different. Do you do you do daily ones or just long term? I do long term. I I do long term for sure. Yeah. Uh, I want to do weekly. I I want to get my Sunday put aside, and I want to do my weekly goals. You know, mm-hmm. on. On Monday, you know, whatever, set up this many podcasts, publish this many posts, publish, uh, call, follow up, uh, sell these products, sell those products, make an ad for this. Like, I want to do it on a weekly basis. I do it currently on a year level, and it's, it just shocks me every year. I'm like, why don't I put more goals? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, why don't I? Uh, yeah, like, wait, I could do more. Yeah. But, but again, that takes a discipline. Mm-hmm. That takes a discipline. That takes a. And you, a don't, you don't look at them? You just keep the yearly ones. I don't. The weekly ones that I want to do that yeah. I've been talking about doing yeah, yeah. for a while. And you like, check those off after a week. Yeah, yeah. So wow. what do you what are you rocking? iPhone or Android? iPhone. Yeah. So on iPhone, when you go to notes, you could do the check boxes. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you've seen that. And then you just put what you want. Just yeah. I was thinking about doing uh, starting daily ones because yeah, that that's even better, obviously. Yeah. But obviously, that's more discipline. That's a because that's just um. Having that structure really makes me feel way more accomplished at the end of the day. Because there, there's a lot of days where I'm like, oh, did I like do enough today? Did I do this? And then I have to look back. I'm like, okay, we did this in the morning. This, I'm like, all right, all right, all right. We did, we do, we did get a lot of stuff. 
but um, I feel like you know, you know, like you said, writing it on paper, writing it in your notes. Just I, I think you got to do both. What do you mean? You know, like you, you got to do your in one year, five year. Mm. You know. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you got to do your 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 daily tasks. Mm. So you have your tasks to feel that satisfaction, mm-hmm. but you got to have your goals of like, you know, I want to buy my mom a house. Or, you yeah. know, I want to. Oh, which is another question. This is random, but that that's my podcast. It's yeah. random. The the monkey bar set on the video. Oh, the vlog. Yeah, is that is that your guys' monkey bar set? No, or? no, no, no. That was, was like, like, that's a fucking sick no. monkey bar. Like, this shit's nice. No. <laughs> that was just like a, a pumpkin patch we went to. Oh, nice. Yeah. I was like that fucking it was thing's so random. big because no, it was random because I'm thinking yeah. about. You know, you guys were at the house, and then one yeah. your, your your boy or your friend or brother he gets on the motorcycle. And you're like, you shouldn't have done that. And no, he has the motorcycle. Oh no, no, no that's what I'm back. saying. Like the vlog was just so random. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah I, I just, was like, my question was just oh, as random. Yeah. <laughs> I filmed a bunch of stuff, and I was like, just throw it in there. I'm like, man, they got motorcycles and monkey bars. Like, what are they doing? <laughs> yeah, I thought I had this on mute. Um, concerts, events. Yeah. Yeah. How many have you done, and, and when when are you uh, doing any in LA? Um, can't tell you how many I've done, <laughs> but I've done a lot. Uh, I just recently got blessed to do like LA gigs last year around this time. Um, you know, COVID obviously didn't didn't help, but uh, I think that was that was another thing where um, I didn't I didn't write. I didn't necessarily write that I want to book shows, but I wrote lists of like every venue I could find in LA, their phone numbers, emails, emailed them. I had my, my roommate call like every single venue pretending to be my, my booking manager. (laughs) And I was like, I'm going to land a gig this year. Like if it's the last thing I do. And, um, I got a no from like every single venue. A lot of them ghosted me, whatever. But, um, and then venues I didn't even know about started hitting me up to perform. So it was like crazy how I, w- I was like, I had a goal in mind, but it didn't work out like exactly as I thought it would, you know, cause it just was a different venue, different company. And then after that shows were just rolling in, in, in LA and, uh, I got a, I have a booking agent now, which is super, super cool. Uh, we just headlined the Viper room this summer. Oh, that's it's crazy. Dope. Viper room is legendary. Mm. It was, it was, it was crazy when the, when we we're behind the curtain, like before the show and it, it slowly opens up like. I was like, wow, we're doing this. And I was like, this kid a year ago couldn't even book a show in L.A. And it's crazy. And now doing the Viper Room on Sunset. Like, what the fuck? Crazy. Has, has your, has your, uh, have your, have your parents come out to L.A. and, and seen anyone? My mom, my mom came out to that show, actually. That's she badass. Out, yeah. Um, it was her first time in L.A., too. Three years. No way. Three years I've been here, yeah. No, it's just been, it's just been hard. I mean, um, you know. But she, she, she didn't travel that much? Or? No, it's just. Uh, she's like a teacher. LA's crazy, yeah. So she, which my family never had a lot of money, so it's really hard to travel that far, um, you know. But now that I had, because for a, a year and a half, did I was you buy staying. the tickets and stuff, or she she did it? No, she bought them. She bought them. Yeah, I, w- I wish I could do that now, but not yet. I I did surprise. Will, okay, I, yeah. yeah, I surprised her and my sister uh, and took them to Universal after the show, though. Nice. That was fun. That was a good time. Um, but no, they uh, yeah, they flew out. Um, but for a year and a half, I lived in an artist community, so no one could visit me unless they bought a hotel. So, mm. so it was just like really difficult, especially out here. Um, so now that I finally had my apartment, like she could stay with me. So it was a lot cheaper. She said to buy the yeah, flight. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, and, uh, shows coming up. I, I, I'm throwing a first ever event with, uh, an event with track life. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be super cool. It's called the hideout. And basically, track life from Long Beach. Uh, no, no, it's track life is basically a music company that, oh. um, they, they kind of help emerging artists, like independent artists, um, just give them a platform with content, um, blogs, you know, different kind of stuff, shows, um, anything to help. They're just all about the artist community. And when they, they had me on their YouTube channel to do like a, it's like a little live set they had, um, in like a s- cool little studio, um, but just talking to everyone and them introducing themselves and you can just tell when someone cares about you more than they care about, you know, their selves. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, dang, like they care about me as an artist and that's like something I really admire. And there's not a lot of companies I meet like that. A lot of companies I'll go to a set 
And it's like, hey, like, what's up? Oh, Yakabuchi, all right, cool. Yep, we got to get this, this, this. We got 15 minutes, blah, 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 this, this. All right, you're out. See ya. And it's like. Yeah, next. What, what, yeah, what am I doing next? Yeah, I'm nothing. But when someone, you know, like Track Life, they really took me in and was like, yo, like, well, tell me about yourself. Like, let's do more together. Let's do this. Like, this is who we are. And I'm just like, these people are dope. So I hit up um, my guy, Irvin, who uh, is, I think, one of the founders of Track Life. Um, I was like, hey, man, I'm so sick of looking for all these shows and stuff to do. I was like, let's throw our own show. Let's help out these artists just like you guys, you know, love to do. I want to be a part of that. I want to help because um, there's a lot of artists I know who, you know, maybe they haven't played a lot of shows and they want more exposure. And it's just, you know, like I said, don't look at a competition. Look at it as helping one another. Their fans become your fans. Your fans become their fans. That's you know? it. That's it. And uh, so he was super on board. He was like, it's crazy. We were literally thinking about doing this before you even called. And I was like, perfect. I was like, let's set it up. We got a venue. We got a date. We got, um, they had me find the artists. Um, so I guess I got my, my homies coming um, and it's just going to be a great night. So uh, the event is called uh, the hideout and the hideout is basically an idea that um, it's a safe place for creatives to come and show their talent, um, come and show, you know, what they love to do and hopefully gain some new fans with the platform that we give them. So it, it's, it's going to be so great. fun. Great yeah. name. Yeah. Thank you. And um, I, I, I think it's going to be so much fun. And it's the craziest thing is we're making the whole thing free because I don't want anyone to pay. I want everyone to come. Like if you're broke as fuck, I want you to show up and just enjoy yourself. There's going to be a bar there. Um, and it's, uh, we're doing the first one in, at a uh, songbird LA. I don't know if you've heard of it. No, I haven't. Um, songbird is in Chinatown. It's a cool little speakeasy. No, it sounds like a fucking Chinatown. <laughs> yeah. Songbird. Yeah, songbird. <laughs> yeah. So you walk through the, the, <laughs> refrigerator and there's like a whole like little venue oh like a there. speakeasy mm -hmm. nice it's super cool um so yeah i guess um just like and uh, that that that's november cool. 3rd november 3rd yeah so um yeah first ever the hideout track life yakabuchi november 3rd um it's a thursday the whole event is free uh there's gonna be super cool emerging artists that are gonna come we're just gonna have a good time and you know hopefully we can pack the place out that's fucking dope. Excited. I'll definitely get this fucking published out and share the message. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, I, I thank you for the feedback on the website that you that it felt professional. Like oh, I, yeah. I just launched this like a week ago or two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Actually, not even that. Just I launched it just a, yeah, when I sent I this. Say, I saw you just recently posted about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it, it's brand new. It, it's, it hasn't even been a week. It's been worked on for longer than that. But the other thing that I, I, I want to do there is I want to get more of a, I just transferred all the emails from the people that had subscribed to my old website. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start getting those members on there. And then I got the people that have been on the podcast. So what I was going to say is if you go on the site and you become a member, mm -hmm. which is just, you know, your Facebook or Google or whatever the case is, uh, there's a form there that you, any concert or any content, you could just post it and anybody that visits oh. the site or, well, you know, can see it. It's almost yeah. like a social media thing, but it's a form slash member thing. Like a bulletin board. Like a bulletin board. That's exactly. cool. Thank you. That's even easier. <laughs> it's like a bulletin <laughs> yeah. board that I want to do for perfect. the listeners and for the people of the podcast. Ooh, that's perfect. You know, so I, I think that that would be a good spot to push it. Again, it's, it's brand new. So I think right now there's like two members um, and you'll see the members grow and stuff, but that's you know, cool. More content, more information, the better. Yeah, sure. I, and then how do how do people? Um, well, you just said the address, you said the location, you said the time. Is there yeah, a website uh, for it or anything? Time is eight, eight to twelve. I don't think I saw you said that, but eight to twelve. Eight to twelve. Yeah. And then, well, is there a site for this, or um, or people want to get more information? Just like uh, my social media, track life, social media. Um, What's your guys' social media? Yeah, uh, Yakabuchi. Um, you guys can follow me, Yakabuchi one. On Instagram, everything like that. You want to spell that? Yeah. Just in case. Y A C O B U C C I. And then um, if you guys want to follow Track Life, T R A K L I F E. Um, and we're going to be blowing it up this week. We got about a week and a half out from the event. Um, and, you know, I, I've learned more of like just letting it go. You know, people are going to come as they come, but not to. Um, worry too much about it you know because it's gonna it's gonna be a great event no matter what and just if if i can get these people you know one new fan if i can get get myself 
one new fan and it's a I mean that's that that's exactly that that's what it's about like what made a part of what made me continue doing the podcast it's like I want a million followers and I want a million streamers Overnight and all that, but or in a week right yeah. you know one in a month you know night or week <laughs> but mm-hmm. it, it, it's not about that it's about if you get that one listener that that you know you impact their life then then that's a big difference and you know originally my podcast is a lifestyle business podcast but originally when it started it was like more motorcycle oriented hence ride boundless mm-hmm. um actually I'll, I'll tell you a fun fact the reason it's called ride boundless is because in the beginning i i didn't i didn't have a car i sold my car mm-hmm. i started the podcast and i didn't have a studio so wherever i had to do the podcast i had to ride out to people's places mm-hmm. So I'd ride out to like Ventura, I'd ride out, you know, downtown LA, mm-hmm. and on my motorcycle, I'd pack up that Dang. Pelican, load everything up and just ride boundless, you know? And How is that out here? Is it scary? What? Like a, a motorcycle, LA traffic? Pff, I love it, man. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, 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 sk- <laughs> I skate in, in Skate, a, look, when I ride my bike, when I ride my bicycle, <laughs> yeah. I, I have a, one of those electric bikes, the Super 73s. Oh. When I ride my Super 73, okay. I'm more afraid on my Super 73 than on a motorcycle. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. But I've been riding 20-something years, man. Mm-hmm. I've been riding 20-something years. And I feel I feel comfortable in traffic. Like, I feel comfortable. Like, like if I'm going to be in traffic for an hour and I'm cutting through traffic and splitting lanes, I, I dig that. Mm-hmm. But if it's like an o- open road, like, so, for example, when I split lanes and I have, like, people with me, like I, they're so far behind me. Like I, I literally stop at the destination. Like yeah, oh, like you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But when it's open road, when it's just open road, I have more fear of open road than when there's traffic. Why so? Like something flying out or? Nah, because now you're going ninety miles an hour. You don't know if something's on the road. You don't know if there's a cop ready to pull you over. Like like for example, a cop's not pulling me over if I'm in traffic. I, I'm I'm gonna fucking get out of traffic so quick. That cop has no fucking chance. Like that. That's one. Uh, two. You, everybody's being cautious, and if there's something on the road, people tend to move out of the way. Like, oh, there's a tire there. You know, they tend to move out of the way. You can see it ahead of you. You, you could see. You could yeah. see. It, it's like a. It's like a river. You know, imagine a river, and then there's a rock in the middle of the river where the water, you know, just goes around, and then there's an accident, and the, you know, everybody's avoiding it, and you kind of see the flow of of the traffic. So I I like it, but I grew up in it. Yeah. Um. But there's people that love fucking going 160 miles an hour, you know. Like I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't dig that, you know. Unless you, if I'm on a track or something. Yeah. But ride? riding in LA for me, I love it. What do you ride? Uh, I ride a 2020 Streak Line Harley Davidson, the big baggers, nice. uh, and then I have a BMW GSA Adventure Bike. Uh, it's an Enduro Sport. That's my. Uh, I describe that as my apocalypse bike. Like, <laughs> that's like I can go on the mountains. That's cool. Fucking yeah, cross rivers, whatever the fuck I want. And then I have an electric bike, uh, electric motorcycle. Oh, okay. Uh, apart from the Super Summit. So you got a little bit of everything. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. My dad, he, he's always rode motorcycles, so I've just always rode on, on the back with him. It's so much fun. Yeah. I've always wanted one, but I just never did. Especially out here, I'm way too scared to learn out here. Yeah, you know, I, I love it, but again, I grew up in it. I, I have uh, known people that rented, you know, a motorcycle, mm-hmm. and... Um, a friend of mine, he owns a big rental company called Eagle Riders. Mm. And Eagle Riders is by LAX. The people that rented the bike got to downtown. When they got to downtown, they're like, can you please pick it up? We're, we're not doing this. This is <laughs> oh, not. No. Yeah, this is not a fucking, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> that, that, that was not enjoyable. Yeah. So for people that are not used to, and, and you got to understand, California is the only state that allows lane splitting. Oh, wow. It's the only that. state. Wow. Uh, uh, you know, so that that's huge. Yeah, um, I thought it was illegal everywhere. No, Crazy. no, nowhere. Just just in LA. Dang. So that that's a, that's another thing. Um, that, that's why I'm used to it, and that's yeah. why when people come here, they're not comfortable lane splitting. Yeah, they never done lane splitting. They never seen so many fucking cars in their life. Mm-hmm. You know why the 405 freeway is called the 405, right? Because you're on it for four or five hours. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Sorry, Makes dad sense. jokes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You're no, going I mean, four or five miles per hour, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, though, because uh, I just got back from Colombia, like, two weeks ago. and The, the country? The country, yeah. Oh, nice. And, what, what part? Um, I was in Cali, Colombia, which Cali, is funny. Yeah. 
But uh, yeah, yeah then, I know. Coming from California, yeah. Cali, <laughs> Colombia. And then it was uh, I was in uh, Bogota. Oh, what that? What were you doing there? Um, I w- my friend plays pro ball over there, um, on the uh, Sabios team from uh, I forget their their city, but um, so we were just like filming stuff for YouTube and. I just nice. I just went out for the experience, to be honest. And How's uh, your Spanish? Hablas español? Oh, that's terrible. No, español. Tequila, <laughs> cerveza, <laughs> See, tacos, tequila. burritos, <laughs> <laughs> nachos. Just add the accent yeah. with the with the words. Yeah. Um. No, it was it was a great experience, but out there, the, everyone rides a moped or motorcycle. Everybody. Everybody. In or most countries. Really? Oh yeah. Because I've that was like my first time in a another another country, so I was just like, I mean, Canada doesn't count, but. Yeah, <laughs> but I like, like when I was in Colombia, it was I could literally put my hand like this and I could high five every my motorcycle. E- every on single one. Uh, I crazy. was in uh, I was in Mumbai. Oh wow! Talking about rivers or fucking water, like Mumbai is a fucking river of motorcycles and mopeds and three wheel bikes and stuff, and it's crazy. so crazy because it's like green light. And it's just like everyone takes off, but but, it, but it, it, they intertwine and they fucking and then uh, if an old lady starts crossing the street because I saw an old lady cross the street, everybody just like like it looked like I described that they look like salmon. It looks like fucking salmon. It's just but no one's scared. Like oh it's no, it's just like a sixth it's, sense. They yeah, just know. They just know. It's crazy. And then it's you see crazy. then you see four or five family members on a fucking scooter. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? <laughs> you see a mother holding on to the dad, holding a baby. Oh my gosh, I a saw five year old in the So front. many people hold babies. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like there'll be the, the dad in the front and then the mom in the back holding the baby and, the, and like she's just one hand in it, like with the phone and the other hand I'm like Yeah. Texting and fucking what? Yeah. No, it's 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 in most uh Crazy. in the Philippines. A lot of Crazy. scooters, Thailand. A lot of scooters, uh, bicycles, motorcycles. It, it's it's Dang. it's it's because people can't afford. They they don't have financing and stuff. Yeah, you know they can't they can't afford that stuff. They wouldn't let me go in a lot of places, uh, like or anywhere alone because I was white. Yeah, <laughs> for real. They were like, they would. At first, I was stubborn and I was like, "Come on, I mean, yeah, it can't be that bad." It's in the movies, dude. Right. But yeah. But I went out during a, a football game. Um, one night because the streets are packed like soccer there is insane so yeah. everyone, everyone knows like if there's a game going the whole city's out so i was like just recording for my vlog and stuff and like the security at the basketball stadium were just like no 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 like you can't do this you can't do this like they made me take off my chain and stuff and like oh my dude you're a fucking super like, target oh shoot and then like yeah they they just were so worried they're fucking crazy i'll, I'll, I'll tell you uh, i've been to Kalin. Um and do you know the do you know the stadiums like the basketball and the soccer right next to each other? No, I I think last time I went in 2011 2012 they were building those. I think those are new ones. Hmm. They were building them and then, um, here's a quick explanation of why it's so fucking dangerous. When this is my opinion, hmm. you know, so nobody you know, oh that's not factual. Like fucking, this is my opinion. Yeah, the, the thing is, is. When Pablo Escobar was running shit, you got to remember, Pablo Escobar was bringing in $65 million a day. A day. Okay? So his guys were making top-notch money, doing nothing. Holding a fucking gun in a safe environment, <laughs> you know. You're making five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, you know, fucking like, do 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 just easy money. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because remember, when you have... Uh, when you have drugs, you have drug money. When you have drug money, you help the economy. Mm-hmm. All right? Miami, all the drug dealers had, uh, you know, other dealers, and those dealers had families, and those families had needed houses, and they needed cars, and they got jewelry, and they got this, and they bought airplanes, and they bought boats, and they cocaine cowboys on Netflix. If you watch that, you know, you see the stories of how much money they put into communities. Most of those high tower buildings in Florida were built off drug money, you know? So it, it just, wow. it just helps the economy, unfortunately. Um, but that's business in a sense, right? Well, look at pharmaceutical, look at the pharmaceutical. All right. Mm-hmm. So when Pablo Escobar was in business, you know, he employed hundreds of thousands of people, like so many fucking people. The operations were humongous and people were making good money. And what did they do with that good money? They would buy their homes, jewelry. They would get their girlfriends. They would do all this stuff and blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyways, when they put an end to it, now these guys that 
imagine you had a job and your job's to hold a gun for one of the most powerful drug dealers in the world, but he's so powerful that the U.S. is not even looking at you, you know, because they didn't look at what was happening in Colombia. They're like, what's yeah. happening in Colombia is happening in Colombia. Let's worry about the war on drugs in America, right? And that, that wasn't even a big deal until Nixon came in and made it a big deal. So my, my point is, is that after 10 years of making five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 back then, which was even more money, all of a sudden you're out of a job. Well, what do you know how to do? Mm. You know how to carry a gun? You know how to kill people? <laughs> what are you going to do? And there was just from the 90s, like 90s to 2000s, even like 2005, 2008, Colombia was fucking crazy. Like you couldn't even stop at a red light. Like if the light was red, you do not stop your car. You're going to get fucking shot in the head and they're going to take your car. Like it became very desperate situation. There was no more money. So that's why now it's much more safe, but you still have people that have that old school mentality. That's crazy. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, because they a lot of people, uh, I mean, like, sorry, not a lot. Everyone spoke Spanish. So I had like two translators that were with us. And there's like a a bunch of like workers saying the same things. And then he comes over. He's like, he's like, yeah, man, they told you you're going to get stabbed. And I was like, bro, what? What are you saying? Like, he was just saying, like, they're like, you can't do that because like they'll run up to you with a knife and like take all your stuff. And I was just like. Wow. Oh, they'll, they'll take crazy. the change out of your pocket. So crazy. Yeah. No, that's one thing. When I travel, I, I, I take everything off. I, I Even an Apple Watch, I take it all off. It's just not worth it. We're so blessed to live in America. Yeah. Like, for real. Yeah. People who say they want to move to another country, I'm like, okay. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Good luck, man. <laughs> Let me know how it goes. Oh. Let's see if you keep your liver. You know, <laughs> yeah. And, no, there there is, there, some, there yeah, is certain countries, countries, you know, that, that, that are... Like Dubai, Dubai is fucking amazing, dude. There's no crime in Dubai. You've been there? Oh yeah, it's pretty. I've been there a few times. Cool. Yeah, Dubai is a it's a 16 hour flight, Oof. nonstop. Is it super hot? Uh, they're obviously in the summertime. It's super hot uh, and humid mm-hmm. because they have a sea right next to them. But um, I, last time I went, there was a, a couple from Texas. And we're looking at the Burj Khalifa, and the Burj Khalifa is the biggest building in the world. Mm-hmm. And the, the 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 couple from Texas, like the woman, looks at me and she goes, "I thought everything in America or Texas, I thought everything <laughs> in Texas was big, but this is big, <laughs> you know, like, you know, <laughs> dude, like you're looking at the biggest fucking tower in the world, like you know, it's humongous." Yeah. Um, you don't know about Dubai? Like not a lot, but I know it has money. Dude, they have a mall. Mm-hmm. Oh, they they have a a snowboarding right. You can snowboard in there? They have a ski resort in the yeah. mall. In the mall. That is crazy. Your mother and father That's can crazy. go skiing or snowboarding while your younger brothers and sisters or cousins or nephews or whatever the case is can go and put a snowsuit on and play in a snow house with slide and make a fucking thing inside of a mall in the middle of a desert. That's so cool. There's another mall that has an aquarium that you walk into. So you like they have the glass where you walk through the aquarium. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side, there's a boat that you could be on the aquarium. And then they have scuba divers so you could swim in the aquarium. In the mall. Or just go shopping. In the mall. In the mall. Or you could just <laughs> buy Nikes. You know? Yeah. And then when Typical. you exit the aquarium, there's a fucking little jungle with, you know, fucking monkeys and parrots and bats and stuff. And you are just in the mall. And next to that one, there's an ice skating ring. You're like, hey, man, I'm just trying to return this. Yeah, <laughs> like, you're just like, like yeah, I just want a new iPhone. <laughs> like, fucking, it's, wow. it's, it's fucking insane. So cool. What I like about Dubai is very family-oriented. It's one of the countries where you go to a mall. There are so many activities for your kids and stuff. That's so you know? cool. So I, I, safe I, there? Super safe. Oh, wow. Strict laws, uh, very strict laws, meaning that if you fuck up, you know, like you're, the penalties are hard. Mm. Uh, they're against drugs, you know, like you, you get a joint out there or something, you're fucked if you get caught. Wow. Like you're fucked. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of countries are, 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 are very strict, but but safe. Yeah. I, I, I don't know where it ranks, but it, it's pretty fucking Dubai's. Dubai's up there. Safer than America? Yeah. Wow. I, I think I think they just honored their uh, 
I was just having a conversation with a, a buddy of mine. He's from uh, England, and he says right now the passport to get a, the Dubai passport to get the exclusivity of it is higher demand than the American passport right now. Wow. Yeah. Why? Just because how new and how clean and how strict their country is, uh, how much money they have. Uh, the quali- secu- the quality of people there, you know, because there's a moment where it was getting really nice and really organized, but then all the con artists in the world were like, eh, there's a lot of suckers with money there. So they went there and then they got hard on that. And now they're saying like, it, it's, 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 it's such a respected passport that that's like a passport. Like the U S you could travel pretty much almost anywhere, you know, with an American passport, the Dubai, I think you could, travel to a few more spots you know like for example if you go to russia i've been to russia you need to go through like a six week permit and fucking approval process and russia and america's got to approve it just to go visit russia and russia's beautiful like if you check out moscow or st petersburg yeah. uh the dubai so passport the u it's called the uae passport you don't need that you don't need that they're, they're united arab emirates but it's it, it's a place you got to see, man. Like yeah. a lot of people, and then as an American going to Dubai, they pay you so much money. Like if you land a job in Dubai, because they they want more American experience, really? educated, uh, wow. military stuff like that. They pay big fucking money. Wow. But uh, and concerts and music over there is insane. Dang. Insane. That'd be so sick. Do a concert in Dubai. Oh, dude. Like, they, that should be on your fucking goals. Like, that. that <laughs> so, next to Dubai, you have Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi has a um, two theme parks. Well, they have multiple theme parks. But one theme park is a Ferrari theme park where they have a Ferrari roller coaster. Ferrari roller coasters. And it's just what? these fucking roller coasters that look like fucking Ferraris. And they're <laughs> fucking up and down. Like, it's just, you know, sick. And then they have a Warner Brothers Studios. Like, we have oh, Universal. Wow. Yeah. They have a, a, an indoor Warner Brothers Studios in Abu Dhabi where it's just wow. this fucking theme park. It's humongous. And it's all indoors because so of the heat. Yeah. You know. Anyways. Dang, so. That's so cool. I, I need to travel more. Yeah. And that's part of that. That experience and life goals and everything else. But that's hopefully music will take me there. Yeah, and it, and it will, and it will. Yeah, if it will. you put in the hard work and stay loyal and committed, right. you will get there. I'm actually, um, well, there's, I don't want to talk about it right now because it's like a surprise, but there's something in the works where I'm, I'm going to get a lot of those opportunities coming up next summer. So I'm excited. I'm excited for you. Thank you. Let's uh one more time. We'll end it with uh November third. November third. Songbird, bird yep. song, songbird, songbird, <laughs> bird song, bird song. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's songbird, songbird. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I just like bird song. Yeah, yeah. November third, um, Thursday at Songbird, LA, uh, Chinatown. A hundred dollars a ticket, fifty dollars a ticket, <laughs> free. Free. Free, 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 free. I don't know how many times I need to say it, but it's free. It's free. Yeah. So any excuse is a bad excuse of why you're not there. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just gonna be fun. Uh, it's, Although I know I know the artists that are coming, so it's you want to you want to talk about the artists? Quick yeah, shout out, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, shout out to Fern, Stasi, uh, Radio Ali, Jamel, and uh, we got a DJ Pastor Leak. Um, a lot of a lot of great talented people coming through, and everyone is so nice and just like super welcoming so if you're nervous about coming and just meeting new people i promise you're gonna meet some great great people and also if you're an artist or you're just a creative yourself come network come meet some people um track life is a great company to know and um they're great people to work with in the future on your projects yeah they're great people to work with in the future on your projects so um yeah november 3rd songbird we go eight to twelve eight to twelve eight to twelve and it's free Yes, sir. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you.